What is your name, please? My name is Duncan Hines. What is your name, please? My name is Duncan Hines. What is your name, please? My name is Duncan Hines. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Duncan Hines and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Thank you and good evening and welcome once again to our game of deliberate misrepresentation wherein our panel endeavors to figure out which one of three challengers is sworn to tell the truth. To tell the truth is brought to you each week by Geritol, America's number one tonic the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Burton. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. <laughs> now, these three gentlemen all claim to be Duncan Hines. Only one, of course, is the real Duncan Hines. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they do not have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, may I direct your attention to the copies of the affidavits that are in front of you? Please follow along while I read it. I, Duncan Hines, have often been called the last word on what to eat and where to eat it. A list of good eating places, which started as a hobby, became a business in 1938 with the publication of my first book, Adventures in Good Eating. Since then, I have written five others. Over 7,000 restaurants, inns, and hotels now are entitled to display the sign recommended by Duncan Hines. Signed, Duncan Hines. I claim to be Duncan Hines, Restaurant and Hotel Authority. You will each question, of course, uh, until you hear this bell. And at the end of the questioning period, you will be required to cast your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Duncan Hines. And we'll begin our questioning tonight with Polly Bergen. Polly? Uh, number one, it says here that you've uh, eaten some 7,000 restaurants, inns, and hotels and such. Do you find that you have trouble keeping your weight down? Yes, indeed. If I ate in 7,000 restaurants, I would, but I don't eat in all the 7,000. Oh, you don't eat in them? No, we take recommendations from friends and from other people that we have employed. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, well, uh, number two, do you feel that there are places that you haven't eaten in that might have very good food that you don't recommend, that people won't go to because you didn't? <laughs> well, that was, that's rather involved. I, I understand. <laughs> oh, yes, there are many. Certainly, there must be. Well, do you feel that's rather unfair? Uh, I don't understand that question. Well, I mean, you, you, you have such a wonderful reputation of being a, a, a fine connoisseur of good places to eat, and don't you feel the places that you miss maybe are, you know, like being passed by because people don't think they're any good because you haven't been there? Oh, that's a long one. Ralph Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, number three... Um, you know what I meant, didn't you, Ralph? I did. It was four or five questions all at once. <laughs> but, uh, number three, describe the sign. It's displayed when you recommend a restaurant. Describe the sign. Give a description of the sign that is displayed when you it recommend a restaurant. It says recommended by Duncan Hines. It simply says recommended by Duncan Hines. And number one, will you describe a little more explicitly? What does there it look like? There are two signs. They both read the same way. One is a small sign. The other is a little larger. Recommended by Duncan Hines. Uh -huh. Kitty Carlisle. Number one, how did you get interested in eating? <laughs> Well, from the time I was a baby, I was always interested in eating. <laughs> and as I grew up, why the interest became keener, and naturally, as I acquired a taste, why it became, uh, I was more fussy about what I ate. Almost Number became two. a habit after a while. <laughs> Number two, is the place you're staying in recommended on your list? Why, no. I can see I'm staying with relatives. <laughs> Hi, Gardner. Uh, number two, uh, what do uh, Philippe, Bob Christenberry, Neil Lang, and uh, Jimmy Hart have in common? What was that last mm. name? Jimmy Hart? Jimmy Hart. 
I can't ask that. Number one, would you know? Why, uh, I know Kristen Berry had a lot to do with the boxing game, and I believe he's being nominated on uh -huh. the Republican Party for... Number three, uh, would you know? No. Uh, number two, who is uh, Clementine Paddleford? A food expert. Uh, you know the name of the paper she's on? Uh, Paddleford, I think it's on the Tribune. Uh -huh. Number one, what... Time to vote, panel. Mm. Time to vote. So no more thing. questions, and without consultation, will you please mark your ballot? And in so doing, you will select number one, number two, or number three. Remember, please, the team of challengers receives $250 for every incorrect vote, which means, of course, if they fool the entire panel, they'll divide as much as $1,000. Now, are we all set, panel? Have you voted? Mm-hmm. Polly, you're ready. Mm-hmm. Who's your vote for? I voted for number two. Uh, actually, uh, it seemed to me to be very obvious because number two looks like the palest one. And, uh, you know, I think he probably spent a lot of time indoors. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, your vote, please. Number three. Actually, uh, we didn't have much of a crack at this one, and none of them seemed to have too much information, but number three looks the best fed of them. <laughs> and Kitty Carla. Number two. Well, I like to eat, and number two looks like he liked to eat the most. <laughs> and how about you, Hi? I voted for number three because I thought number three uh, wore a double-breasted suit to cover the 7,000 right <laughs> And beyond that, he also looks like he's been dunking for years. <laughs> Whoa. Well, uh, at least the votes are in. We'll say nothing about the reasons given. We'll find out right now which one of these distinguished gentlemen is the real restaurant and hotel authority. So now, will the real Duncan Hines please stand up? Thank you very much, sir. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? I'm John A. Wisnum, Old Greenwich, Connecticut, formerly connected with the Electrolux Corporation and now retired. And how about you, number two? My name is Walter Smith. I now live in New York. I was associated with J. Walter Thompson as overseas art director. Incidentally, Mr. Hines has asked that his winnings tonight, his share, be given to the hotel and restaurant school at Cornell University. So that will be done. Sir. And checking out, we find that there were exactly two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Jarrett Hall. Divided, gentlemen, and I hope that it finds you in the best of good health. Enjoy it. Good night and good luck. We'll have a new team of challengers. Now, may we have our next team of challengers, please? What is your name, please? My name is Barbara Hammer. What is your name, please? My name is Barbara Hammer. What is your name, please? My name is Barbara Hammer. All right, panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Barbara Hammer, am a fur model turned comedy writer. I have written for Danny Thomas, Peter Lawford, Jackie Cooper, Robert Young, Ray Bolger, and Pinky Lee. Although most of my writing has been for television, in 1954, I wrote an original story for one of the Mr. Magoo films which won the Oscar as the best cartoon of the year. Signed, Barbara Hammer. <laughs> now, panel, these three ladies claim to be Barbara Hammer, comedy writer. Remember, please, that only the real Barbara Hammer is required to answer your questions truthfully. We'll uh, start this round with Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Well, uh... <clears throat> 
Number one, you say in 1954, you won the award for uh, Mr. Magoo film. Uh, who officiated at the 1954 Academy Award presentation? I didn't attend. I beg your pardon? I did not attend. Did not attend? No. Did you see it on television? Yes. Don't remember who officiated. Number two, do you remember who officiated? Number no. three? No. Who won the award that year for the best picture? I believe it was Marlon Brando, uh -huh. the actor who won the award. Uh huh. The on the waterfront. Uh huh. Number two, who's your agent? William Morris. Number three, who's your agent? Ted Ashley. Number one, who's your agent? Frank Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> Um, number one, who works opposite Jackie Cooper in this uh, series? You mean the uh, female lead? Yes. She plays the part of Mandy Peoples, you mean? Yes. Uh, Pat Bright. Kitty Carlisle. Number two, are there any special qualifications for being a fur model as opposed to a dress model? Well, you should be able to carry the fur as well. <laughs> Those heavy, well, heavy fur. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Number three, where did you model? In Beverly Hill. Oh. Number two, uh, who accepted the Oscar for you? I won. I mean, number one. I'm terribly sorry, but you saw I was looking at <laughs> Who accepted the Oscar in your name? Oh, uh, the head of the UPA Studios. Number two, what does UPA stand for? United Productions of America. United Production what? Of America. Oh. And number three, what was the first film that United Production of America won an Oscar for? Mr. Magoo. Hi, Gardner. Number two, you know Danny Thomas well. You supposedly have written for him. He's helping to build a hospital in the name of what saint? Um, begins with a J. Uh, would you know number one? No, sir. I would you know number three? Do. Uh, number three, there's a fur manufacturer named Harry Hammer. Is he of any kin to you? Yes, he's my father. Uh, what is his favorite hobby? Poodle. Uh, you, uh, uh, number one, uh, you've written gags for Ray Bolger. Now, his wife signs all the checks that you receive. Uh, what is her name? Well, my agent takes care of that. I say, number three, do you know him? <laughs> Bolly Bergen. Uh, Bud, yes. I, I... I wish I could say, you know, but I don't know, and then guess the right one, because then I'd be brilliant. But I do know Miss Hammer, so I feel that it wouldn't be fair for me to participate. Oh. In <laughs> okay, then we ring the bell again and pass right along to Ralph Bellamy. Ralph? Well, let's pursue Hi's question. Number two, do you know Ray Bolger's wife's first name? I believe it's Gwen. Uh-huh. Um... I'll give you a tip for a quarter. I know, <laughs> uh, Number three, when you worked for uh, Danny Thomas, who were some of the other writers who worked with you? Bill Sharp, Larry Mark, Larry Gelbar, Elroy Schwartz, uh, Lee right. <laughs> Number one, who, who directs uh, Bob Young's show? Uh, Dean Rodney. Um... Number two, who wrote the music for Mr. Magoo? I don't know. Well, that's it. Once again, it's time to vote. And again, no consultation, even with Polly. So please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three. Couldn't I vote just once so I feel, you know, right? <laughs> Not only can vote, Polly, but we're automatically going to put up a wrong vote and call it $250 already for the challenge, if oh, you don't I... mind. Maybe you can get your quarter from them after right. <laughs> So we start with uh, Ralph. For whom did you vote, Ralph? Number two. Uh, she knew uh, Ray Bolger's wife's first name, Gwen, which is right, and also uh, William Morris' office uh, rung a bell with me because I'm also with the William Morris' office, and I like that. <laughs> That's loyally. Kitty. I'll parochial. you. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you vote for, Kitty? I voted for number three. Well, when she said, Mr. Hammer's my father, she said it like he was really her father. <laughs> and I think she was telling the truth. <laughs> All right, how about you, Hi? Well, I also voted for three because she not only said that Harry Hammer was a father, but that he raised poodles and she wears a hairdo like a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> 
So there we are, with one disqualification, and that means automatically $250 there, and we'll find out now. How well you did at home. You've been guessing along with us. Find out which of these three charming ladies is the real comedy writer. So will the real Barbara Hammer please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Hammer. Number one, who are you really and what do you do? My name is Shirley Wood, and I'm assistant to the vice president of Arpege Perfumes. And number three, your story. My name is Meredith Anderson, and I represent the Havana Riviera Hotel, opening in Havana, Cuba, this December. She was probably thinking of her own father when she looked that way about <laughs> Mr. Hammond. Well, ladies, with one disqualification and one other wrong vote, that means the $250 each, a total of $500 in Geritol. Thank you very much. Hope you had fun. We enjoyed having you here. Good night and good luck. The qualifications, they really threw me for a loop all around because I totaled up the, the votes on that. It was all wrong. It was $750 that they get, and I hope they're still within hearing distance to know that they're dividing more than they thought they were going to. And that's now... The that I'm that's the what? That's the split. <laughs> well, that's I'm your getting. split. All right, Molly. <laughs> And now, may we have our third team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? My name is Terry Townsend. What is your name, please? My name is Terry Townsend. What is your name, please? My name is Terry Townsend. All right, panel, once again, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Terry Townsend, am the 1957 All-American Soapbox Derby Champion. In competition with 75,000 other boys, I won the event in a racer I built in our garage. As the winner, I received three trophies, a $5,000 scholarship, and a trip to Europe. Signed, Terry Townsend. <laughs> All right, panel, these three young men all claim to be Terry Townsend, Soapbox Derby winner. Again, question till you hit a signal. We'll begin this round with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Well, thank you, Bud. I'm glad you asked me first because I don't know what a Soapbox Derby is. And I'd like to ask number three to describe a Soapbox racer. Well, we have different designs and um, they, they don't look like Soapboxes, I guess, but they, they have pretty good designs, some of them. Number two, uh, is there a motor in this? No, no motors can be allowed. Uh-huh. Number one, I guess you're looking forward to your trip to Europe. No, ma'am. <laughs> Why not? Because I've already been there. <laughs> Number three, what are you going to do with your scholarship money? I'm going to use it for engineering. Oh, wonderful. Hi, Gart. To continue Kitty Carlyle's uh, question, uh, what form of transportation did you take uh, to and from? Uh, By plane. By plane. What line? Pan American. Where'd you land? In uh, London Airport. Where? London Airport. What's the name of the airport? London Airport. London Airport. Uh, was the race, uh, number one, was the race you won sponsored by a newspaper? No. Uh, number three, uh, uh, after you won, your picture appeared in your hometown newspaper. What was the name of the newspaper? Do you know? Anderson Herald newspapers. Where? It's called Anderson newspapers. Anderson where? What state? Indiana. Indiana. Polly? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I happen to have lived in Indiana. Number two, are you from Indiana too? No, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> they always ruin everything. Number one, I think I saw your racing car on display uh, here in New York. What color is it? Uh, Edward White Star. Oh, I beg your pardon? Red with white stars. Red with white stars. Number two, what color is yours? Red with blue stars. Number three, what or color? White with blue stars. <laughs> well, you got red, now, white, now, and blue. Forgot... What more do you want? Uh, number one, do you have to have a driver's license? No. No, ma'am. You don't? Number, uh, uh, number three, where do you race? Where do you race the race? You mean the Derby? On the, the Derby, yes. Well, the finals were held in Ohio. 
In Ohio? Whereabouts in Ohio? Uh, Akron. In Akron what? In Akron what? Ralph Bellamy. Uh, number one, we, we didn't uh, find out where you're from. Where's your hometown? Bellevue, Ohio. Bellevue, Ohio. Uh, number two, what's the uh, age limit to this derby? 11 to 15. Number three, we'll answer the same question. 11 to 15. Number one, same. 11 to 15. Uh, Number uh, number two, do you have an assistant or a starter or somebody to get you going? No, you have to start yourself. You do. Um, well, it just... Uh, they yeah. learn and push? <laughs> number... Well, I'm afraid you've muddied your way through the last of the time. No, how I they hope started? you've asked enough. Beg pardon? Can, could we just ask how they started just for last? How they started? I'm what afraid are they, the time is gone. Oh, but, it's all uh, gone. We'll find out about we'll it We'll never later. know. Oh, sure, we oh. will. Okay. Sure, but mark yeah. your ballots oh, yeah. right now and <laughs> vote for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, looks like we voted all the way down the line. Polly, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three. Well, I'm from Indiana. <laughs> I thought we'd as well stick together. <laughs> Ralph, your vote? Number one. And I have some misgivings about it. He seemed to have most information, but Indiana strikes a, a, a note. Uh, as I read about it in the paper, it seems to me it did come from Indiana, but number one seemed to have more information. I may be wrong. Kitty, whom did you select? Number two. Well, number two looks to me like the kind of a little boy who would be stick at him enough to build that kind of thing in the, in the garage and not skimp on his schoolwork. Have you skimped on your schoolwork? No. <laughs> <laughs> and High Gardner's vote is for... I voted for number one, primarily, I guess, because he had the answers. And secondly, I think he's the only one of the group small enough to fit into a soapbox without <laughs> removing the soap. <laughs> or his legs. Or <laughs> well, without frothing at the mouth in the middle of the race. All right, there we have the votes and our reasons. I hope they're good ones to you. We'll find out now which one of these three nice young men is the real Soapbox Derby winner. So will the real Harry Townsend please stand up? Yeah! <laughs> I knew that my background would help me sooner or later. <laughs> well, it did. Believe me, back home in Indiana, they're probably just as proud of both of I'm from of Richmond. <laughs> All right, Ralph. Uh, you didn't have a question, did you want to ask? Uh, no, if you didn't, I, I thought, I saw, you, I thought I saw your hand up. I guess you were just scratching your head. All right, number one, tell us who you really are, will you, and what you do? My name is Michael Buno, and I'm a sophomore at Newtown High School in Queens. And number two, how about you? My name is Dave Jackson. I'm a junior at Edison High School, and I live in Mount Vernon, New York. What school is going to go to what, what school are you going to go to for your engineering course? Uh, I might go to MIT, but I'm not sure that Purdue is a good university. Purdue is a really good university. All right, $250 each, which means you young men will divide $750 from Jared Hall. Good night, boys, and the best of good luck to you. That's all the time we have tonight, panel, except to say good night, so good night, panel. Good night, good night guys. Right. And this is Bud Collier saying goodnight for Jarrett Hall and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. Transportation for to tell the truth, arranged by American Airlines. Guests to float to New York aboard American famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury.